strategy elicitation. Okay. And uh, and we're going to spoon from strategy elicitation to uh, installation. All right. What is strategy elicitation? Eliciting a strategy. Finding out the sequence of um, sensory, the way a person sequences their senses when they're perceiving reality. Okay. So uh, so if if someone was wanting to uh, believe something that they ordinarily didn't believe, all right, mm-hmm. what would you do? Find out why. You'd find out the sequence that they, of something that they believe, and then you would plug in this new information into that sequence, and then it could be wired in in a pattern that they already have. Okay, something that somebody doesn't believe, they don't right, believe. they don't believe, right. okay, uh, and there's a need for this uh, belief to be there. Okay. Can you give us an example for you? So what? What? Or, or, no, let's let's change that around so and make it easier. Yeah. You know, because that, that's the possibility that that could exist, and then you would want to find, you would want to elicit this person's strategy for going from disbelief to belief. All right. Okay. Let's just say for a moment that somebody believes something, and it's a limited belief. Okay, that's that might be a common one. <coughs> right, so now what do you do? Find out something that they believe. It's a belief system that they have, and you find out how they sequence that information. Yes, but that's not all. You see, because you're wanting to find out, you're wanting to find out uh, some moment in the past where this person has had a belief about something, oh, okay. and then it turns from belief to doubt. Okay. And how they did that. Uh, yes, and how they did that. Okay, so then you would want to find out... Well, how would you find out how they did that? You'd ask them. You'd watch. You, what, what would you do, Jenny? You'd watch them. Ask right? Penny right now. Okay. Penny, is there anything that you, in the past, didn't believe... That you, be- that you believed believe now? Or no. well, that you believed <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> that you believed in the past and then... It, you yeah. realize that it was just a lot of oh, lying. Okay. Did you believe? Is there anything in the past that I used to believe? Yeah. But now you realize that. that was a big lot of lying. Like Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happened from when you believe that, and now when you have another belief system, what did, what what thinking occurred? Well, the fact that some things can exist in like reality as we know it and um, a boat full of animals in pairs surviving a tremendous flood really is, is um, I guess it could happen. Huh? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, all right. What about... Okay, let's... let's uh, <laughs> So Penny's going to f- focus on something that she believed at one point, and then it, all of a sudden it just turned into something that just was doubt. So. Okay. So what's something that you believed in that turned into? How is it when you are believing something? So as you're getting into the structure, yeah, rather than content. How is it? With, there's there's like a feeling that this, that is the way that things. Okay, Penny's think. raising her eyebrows. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. there's a feeling. And she's really pointing down low um, past her waist into feelings. And what happens when that belief goes away is you see that it can be another way. And you said something to yourself? Yeah. You said something to yourself. What happens? How do you? What? What? What is it that your experience is when you doubt yeah. that something now was a belief, but then all of a sudden something else happens and it goes to doubt? What happens? That all of a sudden something was belief and then it's doubt. What is the difference in the, your experience? Notice that I'm using non-sensory specific yeah. terms to get actually what it is that's yeah. there. Okay. The difference in the experience. Well, that it used to feel good, and, and now it feels... Okay, how did it feel before when it was belief? When you were really believing, yeah, how did no, it feel? Yeah, it felt good. Yeah, I mean, it was 
as a con- field. Conviction and a commitment to it, and you know. You conviction, to... con- conviction. Okay, so now we know right. auditory. So right. auditory is very important. Matter of fact. Right. So there's conviction, and then so which is auditory. <laughs> right. There's it's a, like a conviction, and it is a, a a comfort in in speaking it. You know that this is what I believe. And this is something I'm committed to, and then. Okay, so now m- mostly all of the senses have been involved. Mm-hmm. Penny's raised her eyebrows a couple of times while she's been talking about convicted. So it's being uh, uh, having a, a what did you say? Commitment, Con- conviction. conviction. So uh, so far you've used all the senses mostly. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's just see now. Um, what is it? Uh, what is your experience when you doubt now? Now think about the thing that you believed, and then and how you felt and then th- think about what occurred to you when, it, when you went from, to doubt. It's, you... it's, a going, it's a going in. It's, it becomes less spoken <coughs> internalized. You know, kind of like a... Um, um, you know, like a this. <laughs> you know, kind of like a going back and forth internally um, which which substantiates the doubt. And when the this is back and forth internally, what is the this? What specifically is this that's going back and forth? The questions. The questions. The questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The questions. It's like going back. Well, is this, is this what I believe? Or is this what I believe? Uh, excellent. Okay, we, we have it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, when Penny doubts, there's internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. When Penny really is doubting something, there's internal dialogue. Now, certainly there's other things there as well. Now, uh, if we were not so interested in getting the strategy, which we are, Mm -hmm. all we could have done is actually anchor doubt and anchor belief. And then uh, the moment that something came up that really needed to be doubt, you could fire off the doubt anchor. So this would be very simple, doing it that way, which we've done things like this, okay, Mm -hmm. in anchoring. Um, however, if there was something, in fact, where you really uh, wanted to fit now something into a strategy of going from belief to doubt, then, uh, uh, then there would be a need for doubt to involve internal dialogue, like this back and forth. Uh, what we noticed was Penny moving her hands uh, backward and forth in more or less the auditory plane, about m- a little bit higher than mid-range in the auditory plane, okay. Um, so uh, even doing this, more or less, even doing anything that she was doing during that period of time, where there's something that comes up, actually, where there would be a need for Penny to doubt something that she believed, and you just made this little bit of a motion right. like this, actually, it would like it would trigger mm-hmm. Penny's sense of feeling about doubt, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, now there probably is a se- sequence of senses that Penny elicits also when she goes from doubt, uh, when she goes from belief to doubt. Okay, so now, uh, we, we could even get that. Probably that's a good idea. In a moment, we're going to use this exercise and we'll use it to get success rather than kind of belief to doubt, okay? Um, <laughs> so, so let's follow this through. Let's follow this through as much as we can. When you believe, uh, what is the what is your experience when you believe? What is it? How do you how do you experience belief? You experience belief by speaking in it, knowing in your heart that that's what's so for you. I mean, that's like by being able to to, to really share it. You know? Okay, hold it. All right, now what was the sequence of senses? Kinesthetic, kinesthetic, kinesthetic auditory, 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 visual. She did, she did visual memory, then kinesthetic. Visual memory is the first one. Was that the very first one? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so she accessed in vision. She was exiting in feelings, because uh, she talked about... Yeah. She talked, what did she say? She involved mm-hmm. experience or something. Feeling. Oh, heart. Yeah, she went like this. Yes, heart, and then she mm-hmm. said, you know, that she would speak this. So she went from kinesthetic to auditory. She, she said had, speaking and then she said feeling. She said you experience it by speaking. Yeah, by feeling. Speaking what is in the heart. 
So basically, you know, the spoken word has come from the heart in the in the sequence of things. So V K A V. No. Well, you know, I I didn't see Penny raise her eyebrows mm-hmm. or even look up at the very beginning. The very end, she raised her eyebrows. Well, okay. So let's think of uh, let's think of something that you believe. When you've got something that you really believe, mm. okay, about life or about your 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 uh, experience that in work or something. Your belief in yourself. When you have something, uh, let us know. Okay. Okay. So, so how do you experience that? How do you experience that uh, belief? How do you experience belief? That particular belief. Yes. So, what is it that your experience is when you believe? Describe that. The particular belief. Yeah, not the particular belief, but what the feel, what the experience is of this belief. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Yeah. All, right. All right. Now, what we what you can do is it was kinesthetic. She because she's got to have a feeling about this, not something that she sees. Okay. She has when when Penny believes something, there's a feeling about this, absolute feeling. Is uh, unquestionable. Even if she was unable to see, I think, or hear anything, she had a feeling about something. She has a conviction about something that's coming from feeling that it doesn't matter. So, okay, so it's feeling, it's auditory, and then it's visual. And it's auditory internal, then auditory external, then visual. She went. So, so, so basically the strategy, you know, now we can become quite finite in how Penny's using her senses actually, right? Uh, whether something comes, feels like it's coming toward her, you know, that belief actually is something that, that is coming through her, uh, that belief is a, like we could go through the senses, that belief may be quite something that's quite bright, uh, or it may have a colour, uh, it may certainly have a tonal quality or a rhythm to it. I mean, it may, you can go through the senses and find out exactly what kinds of things and then you can stack those anchors. You can anchor those things and stack it. Okay, so it's all about belief. Okay, and uh, so then you can, you know, if there was something the person was in need of believing, you could fire off the belief anchor. Okay, so that the, all of those uh, s- sensations and things are coming to, uh, you know, that thing that there's a need for belief about. Um, okay, so basically, Penny's strategy for belief is that she has a feeling about it. She's she's able to say something about that belief, and it's something uh, that she also uh, is able to see. Okay, so she's exiting in seeing. Uh, so naturally, you know, when we ask her about belief and she's thinking about something she believes, what she's exiting in is what she's conscious of. And what she's conscious of is the visual, it's in the visual sense. Okay, so the main thing is the strategy that we elicited was kinesthetic, auditory, visual. Okay, for Penny. All right. Now, uh, just the reason why we're going over this is that each of us do have a sensory-specific strategy in how we use our senses when we believe or when we do anything. Um, And so it's a good idea to get into the structure of something to find out how someone is using their senses so that you can then use that structure as the change agent to uh, wire something in for somebody. Okay? Is everybody following this? Yes? So, so how would you use the structure that we just elicited to, or, to make a, 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 to you know, install a change? All right, now, if I was installing a change that, there, for instance, let's just say uh, Penny was thinking, well, I don't know. Gee, I wonder whether I'll find, find my mate and when I'll find my mate. And there might have been a feeling inside in the past about this and that we definitely want her to believe in herself and her ability to bring this person to her. Um, and so then I... So bring this person to her. Uh, I know that uh, the, uh, she'll, she'll be able... This is the person that she'll be able to talk with and I know that uh, this is somebody who really will uh, look excellent uh, for Penny 
and then the, this is a pulsar component, you see. So now what I've done... Oh, okay. Did you, did you hear what I did? <laughs> All right. Now there's many ways you can use that. There's many ways you can use it. I just used it that way. What did I do? The brain was your kinesthetic. Yes. Okay, and then the earth... Some, someone that Penny can share things with, you know, yeah. talking, talking right? And then they're saying also she said, yeah, appeal to us, that's it. Look, excellent. Poor Penny. That one's fraud. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, what's he doing New Year's Eve? Now, many things eat that. Now, many things eat that. You know, if you want Penny to believe something, you know, you'll more than likely want to go through set the senses in this way. And you'll totally be in rapport with with uh, Penny's sense of belief about things. All right. Now, there's many ways that you can use this, and it's it, you can be very creative in the way that you apply what it is that we're sharing here about strategy elicitation. All right. Now, what about? Uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask Dave uh, right now to show us uh, your strategy for celebrating self. Dave has had a strategy of, first of all, it does involve some degree of feelings, okay, is, and it, it involves auditory construct and auditory memory yeah. and then internal dialogue. <laughs> In the past, it has involved this, okay. Um, more than likely, uh, Dave also does have a strategy that works well when he is celebrating himself, all right. And it wasn't just quite the piece that he gave us. The piece that he gave us is the overall strategy, that he has used in the past. You know, what we noticed was Dave go, goes into feelings and he feels good about what he's done. However, then some other things start to happen. <laughs> First of all, he goes into, or, what was it, auditory construct auditory. and then auditory memory mm -hmm. and then down into internal dialogue. Okay, now what was going on in internal dialogue? Either yeah. he's feeling yeah. like, wow, I really did a great job. Or but the main thing is that the posture of the head and everything was like looking down more or less right, and going into a flexion. And there was exhalation too. Inflection, flexion rather than extension in the body. Rather than his head, you know, and his chest lifting out and really taking in the celebration itself, there was a little bit of uh, internal dialogue. Okay, so now, now I'm going to ask Dave again. Uh, remember a moment where you felt excellent about self and really like celebrating self because you just brought home, you know, I don't know, it was a big one. You really brought it home. You went out there and you really brought that big one home, right? <laughs> Probably. I'm in a position. I don't want to go to show. Okay, so tell me, tell us. Woo! <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, you know what I saw? I saw, okay, so what was that? It was uh, feelings. Feelings. Feelings out and then going into, uh, yeah. into uh, visual. Uh, yes, but lift out one thing. Okay, so there was just a, a slight coming down into, uh, into kinesthetic. All right? And then before, as Dave was lifting his head up, going into vision, he was bringing his hands up to his chest and he was uh, pumping his chest like this. So what I know is it's kinesthetic, auditory, visual. Okay, when so he's celebrating right. himself, he's kines he's, uh, it's KAV. Right? When he's really celebrating himself, he feels excellent about himself, he's able to hear things about himself, <laughs> and he's also able to say things about himself, right, which is auditory, and all this time he's in vision, you know, he's, so he's, he's uh, experiencing this through the visual sense. So it's kinesthetic, auditory, visual, right? Okay, so that's Dave's uh, strategy for celebrating self. So who's tracking Dave? You know, I would certainly use this. It, you know, if I was, uh, if I'm going to gift uh, Dave uh, tomorrow, this would be something certainly that I would be using a little. This information that you're tracking. Um, okay, so now uh, I'm going to ask somebody else something now. How do you motivate yourself? By 
Okay, so think of something, in fact, where let's just say that you were on the pamper pole, all right, and uh, what was it that you went through, in fact, that enabled you then to, to jump? What happened? I always started thinking of getting an elbow. <laughs> 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 That's something. Okay. Okay, so I probably started thinking about... Okay, so think back and tell us kind of what it was that occurred just before you jumped. Go through the whole process. You, you were up there on top, okay, and then what? I was up there on top and I started... Well, when I was going up, I was told to visualize something that I really wanted and see myself with it. So when I was up there, I couldn't see the bar at all. I was just visualizing a, an incident that I want with my mom. And, and I, wanted, I wanted it. And I wanted to get the feeling of exhilaration being up there over with because I had accomplished all I could up there. That's why I couldn't just jump and get it over with and be with what I wanted. All right, so uh, what occurred? You were up there on the pole, and then what happened, actually, My you know, when you jumped? <laughs> <laughs> Your heart stopped beating. Okay. okay. Actually, what happened, actually, did you, know, what, did you hear? Do you remember anything? I mean, did you say anything, or was it very quiet? It was very quiet. Okay. Did you say anything before you jumped? Ah. Excellent. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. Now, now, now. Did you, do you not? Now, the first time round, we were getting some information, right? Because, because Libby was talking about jumping, and she kind of was here with her hands, which is like in auditory mode, because her hands were kind of coming into her midriff, chest region, and coming in and out like this as she was talking about this. So I know that auditory was important. However, she hadn't said anything that was about auditory, and I was still questioning to find out what it was about that occurred, in fact, that motivated Libby to jump. And the one thing that we got now was that she went, ah! So what do you, so what do you, what do you know motivates, what, what motivates Libby? Auditory Excellent. Thank you, Annie. So listen, listen to the, to the, the auditory. It went, ah! Okay, the main thing is that's the way she's eliciting her senses, visual, uh -huh. auditory, kinesthetic. However, the major sense, okay, that's a motivator for, for Libby is auditory external. When Libby goes one, two, three, or she goes, all right, ready, you know, and she jumps or something like that, okay, it's auditory external that's motivating her. She speaks it to somebody. She says, I'm going to go to something or I want to and she shares with somebody and that's actually part of her motivation strategy. So her sequence is V-A-K and it's the auditory external that motivates. motivates. Okay. That motivates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're wanting pen, if you're wanting Libby to be motivated, all right, um, then you would be sure to talk, have, have Libby talk to you in fact, about whatever that was that she was wanting to be motivated to do, because that's very important. If she didn't talk about it, didn't hear it auditory external, it's possible that a piece of what really motivates her uh, would not be being uh, made use of. You following this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So now, uh, what I'd like you to do is to uh, uh, make up a success story. Okay, so you'll just make up a success story, and uh, there'll be A will make up the success story. B uh, is going to be notating the senses, you know, that this person uh, is using when they're when they're experiencing success. Okay, so then you'll get the senses of that, uh, and then uh, what I want you to do is uh, so C is going to be making sure that B is doing the notations right, okay, and providing a little bit of uh, feedback or whatever that you're picking up, okay? Uh, so then I want uh, a B to elicit A's uh, strategy for uh, when when you're failing at something. You what? When you're fa when you're uh, failing. Kind of hard time even saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Access a pattern of failure. So you think that you think back to something that you kind of didn't complete something or whatever. 
to me, mostly this word failure kind of doesn't exist. And actually, it's happened here in this manual, but I know that Johnny and I are going to be going through the manual and totally updating everything, you know, to really be the language of peace. Uh, but anyway, for the moment, uh, you know, maybe you could say stuck. When you're feeling stuck about something, that's a better one. When you're feeling stuck about something, okay, so that B will elicit A's stuck state. And uh, so B will have elicited A's re- uh, success, uh, feeling of a sense of success, experience of success, and an experience of stuckness. And then A is to verbalize. Yes, A's, A's verbalize. But also, content. you are watching this person's body, move, eye movements, and what they're doing with their body to get more information. Okay? So, uh, so and you will notate this. So, uh, and then uh, all I want you to do is to notate these two things because more than likely there's, there's certainly a difference between what's, when a person's feeling success and when a person's feeling stuck in the way you're using senses. So this will give you information on what to do when you are feeling stuck. Oh boy, I need to use these other senses. And that more than likely it will bring you out of it. Whatever it was, it was a stuckness. When you use those senses, it's bound to because it's just like fitting that software program in. Okay, so so each uh, each person will have the opportunity to be A. Okay. All right. Is there uh, any questions? Yes. Um, install the success feeling at the queuing points. Um, is that queuing points? When do we actually put in the success? Okay. Uh, all right, so now you're going to find out the sequence of senses that's elicited for uh, success, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and then you'll want to find out what the sequence of senses are elicited for a stuck state, mm-hmm. okay? And, uh, and so then what you'll want to do is you'll look and see what it is, in fact, that's the way the person has elicited their senses, and the cue that, that, uh, that triggers the sequence <coughs> is the, the, the accessing cue. Okay, are you following that? In other words, if, uh, if we, when you ask me, you know, when you're, when you're experiencing success, David, um, how do you experience this? And you saw me look down to the right and then look over here horizontal to the left and then look uh, up to the left, right? So, so now I'm talking about, you know, my experience of success. What you saw me do was access first from feelings and then I went to auditory memory and then I went into uh, a visual, visual memory. So the accessing cue is my feelings and so, so, that when, uh, so that when they're stuck, you know, so let's say there's something that I'm stuck about uh, and you're wanting me to, to access this success strategy in something that I'm stuck about then uh, you would say, uh, and when you've felt in the past stuck about this, okay, and you're, you're uh, using the kinesthetic sense, you know, um, so actually you've led off with a kinesthetic predicate, okay, because you're installing the success strategy in the stuck, in the stuck state. Okay, basically uh, this is notated uh, on page 74 of the uh, practitioner's manual. So uh, you'll make up a success story all right, and you'll find out what the what way the person's using their senses. Uh, enter into the story and experience it. And it should lead to positive feelings. Okay? And then anchor anchor the success feelings all right? and then uh, access a pattern of failure which led to uh, negative feelings then, uh, and then uh, install the success feelings at the queuing points of the previous failure what is the M memory? What is auditory memory Mm. So they go over that sequence and show where they install the success feeling with the fusion point? 
Okay. Um, okay, so what you're going to do is... Uh, uh, You make up a success story, and you can see on page 74 of the practitioner's manual that this person visually constructs uh, six, this uh, success story and then auditory construct. Okay? Alright, so now auditory construct uh, leads to uh, positive feelings. So it goes from visual construct to auditory construct, and then the person has these positive feelings about things. Okay? So auditory construct is the, uh, uh, is the cue with which you can lead off from. That's the test mm -hmm. part of the, you know, so that, so that when you're uh, installing the uh, success uh, feelings, all right, you'll want to lead, you'll want to install it, you know, at that point of auditory construct. So, you know, uh, when you're uh, thinking about what constitutes success, when you're thinking about what constitutes success for you, that's auditory construct. For this person. Yes. Um, and you remember moments in the past where you've you've uh, said things to yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about being successful. Auditory memory, right? But they're saying memory is negative, so it must have been. Pardon? It's it's auditory memory about the unpleasant. Feeling, right? Accessing the power of stuckness. That's auditory memory negative, so that means the person was actually reviewing something in the past that said that was about their stuck state. Okay. The main thing is find the uh, cue, which is actually the test, you know, before the person exits into their feelings. And then uh, install the success uh, strategy straight after the cue, the first cue. All right, which is auditory, which is in this case it's auditory construct. <coughs> so far, you far, uh, anchor the far off the success anchor straight after that first cue. Okay, yeah. in the in the strategy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ned. Well, I think getting it is by doing. Yes. Yeah, right. At that point, I'll know whether I get it or not. <laughs> Okay, so in other words, if you if you were uh, so the main thing is the act, pattern of failure here is visual memory, auditory memory, and it's kind of it's uh, leading to negative feelings, uh, and yet uh, so when the person's feeling successful, auditory construct uh, is absolutely there. Uh, okay, so auditory construct is the cue that the person takes off from. Once the person has, is, that's the cue, okay? So that leads to feelings that are excellent of success. So, so that's the cue that you want to you want to then try to anchor off on, okay? okay? So that's that's all you need to do. All right? Has everybody got it? Okay, so we're going to just, just talk a little bit about uh, anchoring uh, of success, and then uh, and the figuring out of what the strategy was for success and then uh, 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 finding out uh, the strategy, what this person does uh, when they're feeling stuck and what the accessing cue uh, was when they're feeling stuck because then what you were going to do was, what you did was uh, you found out the accessing cue when this person's stuck and then uh, let's say that was internal dialogue uh, so the person sort of talks to themselves and then they feel something about this when they're feeling stuck and which leads to kinesthetic negative feelings. So they talk to themselves and then they feel this and talk to themselves and they feel this. So talking to themselves, internal dialogue, is the accessing cue. You know, so later on in life, wherever the person is, right, you know, it's a good idea for them also to go from that cue that ordinarily would lead them into their stuck state. And so it would be when I talk to myself and boom, fire off the, the success strategy at that point. Okay, so... Um, what have you uh, got? And it can be you know, anything here that was to do with exercise. Yeah, well, Rich. I was unable to uh, access a success state. Okay. Um, 
mostly when this is happening, uh, we are in need of uh, creating a degree of flexibility, okay, and creativity as well. Because uh, one way that uh, Richard could uh, access a success that would be to create, literally just to fantasize and create a success strategy. More than likely when you use your imagination to create something, it's going to probably more or less be the same strategy that you would be using when you're feeling uh, successful. The person, the people that were eliciting this, uh, listening uh, Richard's success uh, uh, strategy, <coughs> it's good for you to uh, to uh, have uh, take Richard back to moments where he he was feeling, is feeling successful, so that you're passing it into the present tense that he has this feeling of success. He is feeling this success uh, from the past, so that uh, so that the way to get back to this is by is through some memory that's involving association. So uh, I'll bet that uh, he really was feeling excellent when he married uh, Deborah. So that would be a moment. You know, you've got to go back to remembering and thinking of universal experiences for you, right? <laughs> okay, so they're all universals. What was that graduating? From college. Okay, so now that might, I don't know, you see that, is, is that, would that be universal feeling of success? I'm asking you here, out there in the general populace, right? <laughs> when people graduate from high school, are they feeling success? I saw Maybe. it today, yes. I saw it yeah. demonstrate a success strategy yesterday. He told me he was an expert kindling gatherer, and he went out there and grabbed it, and he went out and found all kinds of wood. And okay, so, so then the way you lead into this is, what is it, then I would say, well, what is it that you like? Because what a person like is about success, certainly. So they start to think about things that they, you like, uh, things you like doing, and then or, then uh, Richard finds himself in the bush, bushwalking, or he remembers a moment in the past where he was uh, experiencing something in nature, or uh, you know. So that's a way to get back to it, to get back in, get into it. Uh, so the way uh, to bring Richard into a feeling of success is certainly. Uh, by working with him uh, and getting universal experiences, you know, that you were sensing that would be, he would have been successful, feeling success, um, and then going to it through other ways involving what he's, he's feeling fun, you know, when he's feeling fun. Uh, last time that he was really having a good time doing something, more than likely, you know, you're accessing the feelings of success when he's doing this. Uh, could be a design uh, situation that he was confronted with and he had to come up with, with something and it was quite ingenious what he came up with. You could ask him, because uh, he's an architect, uh, think of some design that he's installed in a house uh, and uh, so is he remembering the success that he's had as a result of doing something with heating or doing something with lighting. Um, so the way to get back to this is through association. Okay, If you're asking the person to recall the time you know, that may be, uh, it may be easier to ask the person through association. It's always a good idea to do that a little bit anyway. You know, so that if I was working with Richard and I could see that he was a little bit stuck getting the success strategy, you see, don't keep st installing failure. You know, tr you need to be very flexible. So, as, for instance, Dave, if you're realising that what you've presented to someone in a sale is not quite cutting the mustard, you know, to go on with that, you know, boy, I tell you, you need to be flexible, you know, in the way that you elicit this, okay? All right, so I... So if you want to, if you're in this last exercise, if you're B, and yes. you're working with, with A and A, yes. it's like just, you know, drawing blanks. Yes. Then, if you notice that, then the next thing to do is like, was there perhaps a time when you you know, enjoy such and such thing, you start just trying different things. Okay, so that may work, and what if it doesn't? Now what do you do? Something else. Huh? Something else. Yeah. Well, Obviously, but what would you try? What, I mean, what would you try? What else would you do? Um, what else could you do? Yes, yes through association. Okay, now what if that doesn't work? What if that doesn't work? Now what do you do? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. Good. Thank you. Good. You know, you really got to be using your imagination uh -huh. because that's, you know, if somebody's imagining 
something, it's more likely that they're using their strategy to imagine something. So then you ask the person, well, uh, would you enjoy a creative component to be here in this exercise? And the person says, yeah. And so you say, well, think back to some moment where you were, you were feeling creative and, and as you are getting into this moment of remembering a moment in the past when you are feeling creative and you're feeling creative, right, um, and nod your head or do something, and so you anchor that creative part. And so, uh, and so that now when you ask the person to think of some moment, you know, where, where they are doing something that they enjoy, boom, fire off the creative component. The person starts to be creative. You know, you're accessing that creative component. The main thing is that you, we need to be flexible mm-hmm. at being able to generate the outcome that we want. Okay? And, uh, and any response is communication. And so, no response is the response. That's communication. So, good idea to make sure that when something's going on and it's, you sense that it's not working, you, that's absolute indication that there's need to try something else. Possibly it may be the language that was being used somewhat. Uh, uh, I would then try some posture changes, maybe uh, Richard in, in uh, lying down a little bit or, or changing the analogue of fraction. It would help because possibly you were in internal dialogue. If whoever B was, it may be they were sitting on, on Richard's left. Mm-hmm. So they're always drawing him into his internal dialogue and he's wanting to be in an expressive state, right? So it would be better if he was feeling stuck if you shift analog and you come over onto the right side. That's a good point because I said it directly in front of Richard. And yeah. he's like, he's making a lot of eye contact with me. Okay, so, so now it would be all right for Terry to sit directly in front of, really? of Richard. Okay, those two would feel okay about that. Right. But, but female and female and male and male, not so much. Okay? Hmm. Not so much. That's, that's, that's uh, just a generalisation, but of course there's always exceptions. I felt that. Yeah. Huh? I felt that was a problem. I didn't know what to do with it. Move to the side. Yes, change that. Change that dog, you know. Yes, really. Laying down, relax too. I think might have been better. But the main thing is be flexible. That's all. Interaction. Okay. That's good. Right. What else? Uh, actually, good idea, Richard, to do this uh, over lunch. It should only take five minutes, really. Okay. Who? Uh, who else? It was an excellent exercise for um, really practicing seeing where someone is accessing from Mm -hmm. and really embedding that in myself. Okay, because, yes, all right. So the more that that you would do of this, okay, the more skillful that you become. Yes. Okay, so so let's just say that for a moment, okay? You are selling me something and and you've, you've asked me about something that's just about recreation. However... It is about me being successful. You know, you just like we're just talking about. It. So, and you, and you say, and you you've asked me this about my recreation, and I say, oh God, I really love water skiing. You know, I remember the last time I went water skiing and how good it felt. Uh, you know, and I, and I really love talking about it as well. Okay, so now you are really knowing what my success strategy is. So, you know, what you saw me do was my eyes went up to the top, the top left. Right? Then they went kind of down over here into kinesthetic feelings. And then I went, my eyes went horizontal and to the left into auditory memory. So now, if you were selling me something... I would see those same cues and that same pattern. Not, uh, or you what would you do? You were reacting favorably with me. Okay, so what would you do now? You were selling me, uh, you were selling me uh, uh, a cash register system. Uh-huh. Okay, so now how do you go about doing that with me? Just say what you would do. You don't have to be it, but or what senses would you use? I, I would try to pose an oil <laughs> You see what I mean? What is he doing right now? Look. He he goes he he goes to me, I would I would suppose I would of course he's already starting to get in rapport with me. My success study is because he's raised his eyebrows, he's gone into a visual mode and the eyes were gravitating, I'd feel. He went down into feeling, right, and then he went into auditory. So now, without saying anything, he was using my strategy. Okay. Oh, accidentally. Yes, accidentally. 
And actually, you know something, when you're in rapport with somebody, you are accidentally doing this. This is happening. This is happening intuitively. <laughs> this is about stuff that happens intuitively. You could say something about this. You could say, I could see this, or you could see this cash register in your stores and feel. Well, you've already said in your store, so you know, it's kind of getting into okay. you know, just, just, being there. Just to have them create a picture, because you know that's, that's what they do. They create a picture for for success. So, oh, well, I 